Today we're going to answer the question, is Harley getting rid of the Sportster line? So in the last few months, there's been some questions raised about Harley Davidson and whether they are eventually going to get rid of the Sportster lineup. The 883 Iron has been an excellent seller for Harley. But on the other hand, the Iron, the Roadster, the Custom haven't been as good of a sellers for Harley recently. Um, so we are left to believe. If we have a look further to the Australian website for Harley Davidson, we can see that there's the what's new section for 2020 includes three bikes. You've got a Road Glide Special Edition paint, you've got the Soft Tail Standard, and you've got the CVO. But a notable omission, of course, is that there is no new Sportster models. This has led to a lot of people asking whether Harley is going to continue the Sportster line. Let's imagine for a moment that Harley does do that and they get rid of all their larger capacity Sportsters. What does it leave in the Harley range? So in Australia, you're left with your only lambs option for Harley is the Street 500 and that's it. And about $10,000 starting price here in Australia. The Iron 883 is an excellent seller for Harley and it will continue to be offered without a doubt. They, they can't get rid of their top selling motorcycle. It will just make no sense. So let's imagine that the Iron 883 is still available. But then there is no Iron 1200. There is no 48. There is no 48 Special. There is no 1200 Custom. The Roadster was discontinued pretty much last year as well. So all of those bikes are now out of the picture, which leaves the 3500, the Iron 883, and then of course you can get the 1200 kit for the Iron 883, and that's pretty much it. After that, we move to the Cruisers. So the Iron 883 starts at $16,000. At Harley, you can buy a bike for $10,000, then there is nothing up until $16,000 for the 883. And then there's no incremental increases up until you hit the cruiser range. Okay, so once we hit the cruisers, you jump to $21,500. So in essence, you jump into the $20,000 price range with only two bikes being offered under $20,000. Harley's already known to be an expensive bike brand, a premium brand, only offering two bikes under $20,000. One of them is a Lambs bike. The other one is, let's face it, an underpowered 883, um, awesome looking bike, but again, an underpowered, unrestricted bike, and that's it. So what that means is, if Harley is trying to attract new customers, they are pushing them up into the 20,000 plus price bracket straight away. An interesting move from a company that's trying to attract new buyers and increase their sales. So you've got the Softail standard starting at 21,500, the Street Bob is 22 and a half, Low rider is 24 and a half. Okay, and then you're going up into the high 20s after that. Let's say you want to upgrade from a Roadster or a 48 or one of those sorts of uh, Sportster models. The Low Rider S is basically the next model that has a slightly better clearance, um, dual front brakes, and it starts at $28,000. So it's a, it's, a, it's a significant amount of investment to jump into a decent Harley. So if you look at it from that perspective, it would leave a massive gap between $16,000 for an underpowered Harley to mid-20s for a Cruiser. And it just leaves a massive gap in between those two models um, for Harley to just discontinue Sportsters altogether. What are Harley's options then to move forward from what they're doing at the moment. So how is Harley going to attract some new customers to their brand if they leave that gap open if by getting rid of Sportsters? Well, I don't think they're going to get rid of them. That's basically my hunch, is they're gonna continue with the Sportsters. They're going to offer the 48 because it's also becoming a slightly more popular model. So the 48 is basically a street cruiser and that's the model that needs to continue for Harley. There are two things Harley Davidson should do, especially when there are a lot of competitors at the moment on the scene with very similar bikes. So the first thing is Harley has to listen to customer feedback. So there's a lot of people that have a lot of complaints about two things on the 48 and on many of the Sportster models. The first one, of course, is the range. And even though they are a street focused bike, the peanut tanks look great. 130 kilometers before the fuel light comes on is very, very, very small. <laughs> like that's ridiculously small. So, so by changing that shape a little bit of that peanut tank, that's something that Harley should definitely invest in. You can maybe, like it's a very thin tank, maybe they can make it a little bit wider. Um, they could make it a little bit longer or just they could keep the shape but increase the size of it. It's the number one gripe for many Harley owners is the very small range. Me personally, on my Roadster, I don't mind. I get about 160, 170 kilometers out of mine, and that's you know, it's a slightly larger tank, and I don't really mind because I do use it for city riding mainly and not long distance riding. But 
let's think about this for a second. If a person is shelling out sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars for a motorcycle, they're going to want to make sure that it does more than just one thing, which is cruise the streets. They they want to do slightly longer runs on the weekend. Okay, so that's something that should definitely be offered. Consumers are saying is that the twelve hundred is a little bit underpowered. So I'm not sure what Harley is planning for the future of the engines, but you know the water cooling is coming. That's a given. But could Harley increase the capacity of that 1200 Evo engine to maybe a 1400 or a 1500 just for a little bit extra up and go? And I think that that would be ample for people to go, oh yeah, this is this is enough for me to lean towards buying a Harley over many many other bikes. Okay, so. Yeah, something to think about there for Harley as well. The second thing I think they should really consider doing is looking at their marketing. How is Harley marketing their motorcycles at the moment? I personally don't see what Harley is doing to try to improve sales towards the younger, cashed up, early 20s sort of riders. I don't I, I don't see what they're doing in that area. Like they've, they've got these models which have been around for a while now. There's no marketing campaign. Harley needs to redefine a little bit what the sportster is and maybe make it a little bit more of a weekend tourer sort of bike so offering like a slightly redesigned rear that has maybe some luggage capacity or maybe offering factory luggage as standard uh, to say hey if you do want to take this bike into the hinterlands um, if you want to do you know some canyon runs whatever then here's a set of luggage for you straight from the showroom um, go straight from the showroom and you know, maybe even a, even a two-up option. The Iron 1200 lends itself beautifully to be a two-up bike, and so you just you know needs a better seat, a better pillion seat, um, maybe a, a pillion backrest, and that's it, and, you've, and you're set. So a slightly larger bike with a bit more touring orientation behind it, it lends itself to another purpose for your Harley rather than just having it as a street bike. There is one additional thing Harley could maybe think about doing straight off the bat and that is to offer slightly cheaper uh, stage one upgrades so a Harley out of the box sounds okay but it's never going to be as awesome as once you start opening up that airbox and putting on a different set of pipes Harley they could do something like throwing a set of pipes when you purchase a bike something along those lines would maybe make it a better buying proposition but there's gonna be something that they offer that allows the bike to be competitive Harley can no longer just sit there and sell bikes this is not gonna happen they're way too expensive compared to what you can buy now from other makes there's one competitor in particular that is taking a lot of sales from Harley and it's purely just a better engine um, in a very similar format that extra little bit of power and that extra little bit of functionality yeah, eating up Harley sales that's about it for this video today everyone just thought I'd share my opinion on what some people have been saying about Harley getting rid of sports to line up I don't think it's gonna happen I think it would leave a massive gap it's, it would be against Harley's strategy to move forward with the brand and if they were to do anything like that they would need to fill that gap with a model that goes between the sixteen thousand to twenty five thousand dollar price range that is more affordable and accessible for younger people and for people to consider Harley as a bike that they're going to have sitting in their garage. That's it everybody. Thank you for listening all the way to the end and I hope to make more of these industry commentary sort of videos for you. I'm really loving my Harley at the moment and it's really interesting to see how this company is responding to their drop in sales and uh, their popularity um, slowly decreasing over the years. And um, I, I love my Harley and I really hope that uh, the company can turn its fortunes around and make it and to continue to offer excellent cruises for the market. If you haven't already, could I please ask that you subscribe? That would be awesome. Thank you for supporting the channel. Every single one of you, every time I get a subscriber, it really motivates me to keep pushing through and make more videos. So thanks everyone. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.